Okay, so a um, couple of things have happened over the past couple of days. Uh, I want to give a shout out to SR Grusso, uh, S R G R U S S O, for his help. This guy has been absolutely invaluable to making this work and gave me a great uh, bunch of pointers to help me out. Um, and I do want to give credit where credit is due in case you think like I can just make all this stuff up off the top of my head and figure all this out. You know, sometimes you do need some assistance or you need to talk to some folks. And so I definitely want to give a shout out to them and say, uh, say thanks for all the help. One of the things that uh, uh, SR Grusso did before was he ported a ROM uh, to the Blox 2 phone. He ported uh, Cyanogen Mod 13 or Lineage OS 13 to the phone. And uh, it never was fully functional, but it definitely was, uh, was working and a good step in the right direction. And so uh, I messaged him and, and asked him if uh, it was possible to um, see the ROM that he uh, ported. And he was kind enough to send me the ROM that he ported from and the ROM that he ported when he was done. And what's interesting was we've been using the garlic. Uh, as our device that we're stealing from. And he actually used the land, uh, Xiaomi land, uh, I think it's like the Redmi 3 or something like that, but a Xiaomi phone instead for his backup. So I, uh, I took the liberty of switching all of the vendor files over and uh, redoing the tree based on uh, the Xiaomi land and building that, unfortunately, it uh, it actually built worse than what we already had. So I went back, um, I reverted back to our modified garlic tree. However, um, going back to the garlic tree, using the garlic stuff with, that we've been using this entire video series, I was able to get it to successfully boot, and I think I'm gonna have a video on that as well, but uh, to do that, I needed to um, input some vendor files and start mixing in some of the ones from the Xiaomi LAN device. And by putting those Xiaomi LAN device vendor files in there, uh, I was fortunately able to make it boot. So uh, that's been a real real great uh, thing to, uh, to get to that point. Um, but so I guess I wanted to bring this up because this whole time we've been borrowing from the garlic tree. And now I realize that, okay, that works really good. The garlic tree is really helping us out. But, uh, you know, for some of these vendor files that have been missing, we've been borrowing from garlic. And it turned out actually borrowing from land uh, made it work a lot better. So, you know, some of the uh, vendor files are still uh, the original and some are from, um, you know, from the, uh, uh, land device. And actually, I think there's still a few from garlic that I have mixed in here. So kind of an eclectic group of, uh, of files, but I did just want to point this out that sometimes uh, you have to maybe even take a step backwards before you can step forwards. And that is, you know, looking at your research and saying, hey, am I borrowing from the right device? Yes, that device is really close to my device. Is there another device that's close to my device that maybe I can steal something from it? So there we go. Now we still have a lot of work to do um, and, uh, and whatnot, but uh, we did get to successfully boot to the, uh, to the launcher, to the home screen of Android. And I think I have a, I'm gonna have a video for that um, shortly, just showing what that looks like. But so now we can actually start breaking down and looking at, okay, what works, what doesn't. We need to test everything and see what we need to fix to make it fully functional. And that may involve swapping around more vendor stuff. It may involve uh, changing some of our device tree. It may involve, um, you know, borrowing other things from, for instance, the LAN device and putting it into our device tree um, or, or different vendor files from elsewhere as well. So lots of work still to do, but uh, we do have a booting device and that is really great news. So if you're following along, uh, you know, just know that uh, sometimes you have to borrow from different sources 
And then something else too, is I wanted to make sure that you, you know that there is an appropriate time to ask for help. And if you're getting bogged down, if you're getting stuck, XCA is a great place. If you are respectful and you are um, patient, you know, posting on XCA, um, private messaging, I, I caution against private messaging unless you uh, have good reason to do so. But uh, for sure, at least posting, um, possibly private messaging, specific question to a specific developer um, to get the help that you need when you, uh, when you've exhausted a few other options of actually searching for what you need, uh, you know, whether it's web searching with DuckDuckGo or Google or whatever, whether it's, uh, you know, doing some trial and error and swapping some files in and out, or whether it's, uh, you know, um, trying to run through the logs and doing some traces to see what's wrong. But there is a point at some times that you do need to ask for a little bit of help. And for myself, I had to ask for a little bit of help on this and uh, SR Caruso was super awesome to help me out with that. And so um, be aware that that's, that's another avenue that you have, you know, phone a friend, right? So uh, we'll take a look in the next video at uh, our, our somewhat finished product of an actual booting device and, uh, and we'll see where we're gonna go from there.